Hi, I'm Akash and I happen to be a 2019 GSOC scholar and this is my screencast for the work that I've been doing for the last three months. This happens to be my GitHub profile and just in case you feel like getting in touch with me, here's my LinkedIn profile as well. I look a little bit different than the pictures here, but anyway. So what I've been working on. So let's quickly glide through the repository and then we can actually get through the demo. So the Force Asia's PS Lab desktop application is the one I've been working on. And what I've actually done is uh, used the Electron framework to do a revamp of the old PyQt application. The old PyQt application happened to be a bit archaic as, uh, I mean, as far as the UI is concerned and maintaining it was really difficult. Just in case, if you feel like going through the code anyway, you can go to the legacy branch and you'll be able to see the code there. And as you might guess, it's quite old and messy. So I don't know whether you should actually try it out or not. But our currently working branch, as in the branch we are working on, is the development branch. And uh, we push uh, push this branch to master every week. I mean, that is what we have planned so far. So the master branch is the most stable of all and the development is the bleeding edge. So here we have a nicely done documentation for the whole application as in how to contribute, how to set up the whole thing. And as we'll go through the demo, I'll talk about Electron Framework a um, little bit. So we'll know uh, why we chose it over the old PyQt application. So then we have the installation process, the current project status, everything that we have implemented so far, and the goals that we have achieved, and the goals we are heading for. So with that out of the way, we can now go back to the demo that is running. Oh, I think it's, <laughs> okay, never mind. I started. So this happens to be the PS Lab desktop application. And as you can see, uh, the UI is pretty interesting because we have uh, tried to keep this in parity with the Android app because we happen to be a mobile first application so uh, most of the features that you see in the Android app have been implemented here as well and uh, this basically means that if you know how to use the Android app you'll be able to use the desktop app as well then uh, there are some major instruments that have been implemented as you can see on the home screen but before that, let me just quickly glide you through the pin layout of the board that you'll be receiving in case you buy it. So the main things that we'll be using are um, this wave generator pin array, the oscilloscope pin array, the logic analyzer, and the programmable power source. If you hover over any of these pins, you'll be able to uh, see what they exactly do and this comes in real handy when you are trying to build up some experiment. So in our case, we'll primarily use S1, S2, uh, SQ1, SQ2. S1 and S2 are used to generate analog signals, which can range from uh, normal sine waves to triangular waves. SQ1 and SQ2 are used to generate uh, square waves and PWMs. And then we have uh, the logic analyzer pin array, which are basically used to analyze digital output output from external circuits. Uh, then we have the oscilloscope pin array, which are primarily the channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, which is basically the mic. And for multimeter, we sometimes use the resistance and capacitance uh, pins then we have the power source uh, pin array which are basically used to drive external circuits because they can generate uh, up to 5 volts um, so sometimes external circuits like uh, uh, a mic let's say needs power from 
uh, an external source so instead of using the battery you can straight away use the PW, uh, I mean PS lab board so now going back to the home screen um, let's start with um, the main instrument of our board which is the oscilloscope so currently we have this uh, oscilloscope pins let me just go back there channel 1 channel 2 connected to S1 S and S2 using uh, two jumper cables and if you switch it on it will immediately start reading the values but as you can see we have one input only this is because we are monitoring just channel 1 for now if you turn uh, if you turn on channel 2 as well you'll be able to see the uh, output from S1 and S2 simultaneously you have other options like uh, triggering so this basically uh, makes sure that you only trigger uh, a wave when uh, this wave hits a particular voltage mark all right you also have uh, an option to reset this comes in handy when the board buffer gets overflown in that case the board hangs this is kind of uh, a known issue in almost all sorts of uh, uh, micro controller devices so uh, this is something normal so in case the device stops responding you can always click the reset button and the device will reconnect itself so we have kept this for now because uh, finding a workaround uh, for this would take a rather more uh, time and investment but for now this is uh, this works just fine so um, yeah going back to the oscilloscope then you have the option of Fourier transform so if uh, you know what Fourier transform is uh, I mean in brief it is basically um, I mean it basically states that if you have a wave it can be broken down into component sine waves so Fourier transform can break this down into component sine waves as we have a pure sine wave right now so we just have one peak had it been a square wave let's say so we'll have multiple peaks because as the rule states it can be broken down into multiple sine waves so number of peaks equal equals to the number of sine waves uh, that are making up that particular wave then we have the option to do data analysis which basically allows you to um, do sign fitting on a particular sign function and get the relevant parameters from the from that particular wave then you also have square fitting for square waves and so on all right then we also have an option of xy plot when you have uh, two waves being monitored like this you can plot one wave with respect to other so if you click this you can see that it's being uh, plotted with respect to other the next instrument that will be going through is the wave generator so this basically allows you to generate all sorts of waves from sine waves to triangular waves to square waves and so on and you can change the properties of those waves that are being generated from the circuit so it can be changing the frequency it can be changing the phase and so on so we can have triangular waves uh, for wave 2 let's say and we will go for a sine wave for wave 1 and if you go back to the oscilloscope we'll be able to see the output so then we also have the option of uh, generating square waves or PWMs so in this case let's say we generate um, a 500 Hertz uh, and a duty cycle 50% PWM wave so in this case we'll have to reconnect our channel 1 and channel 2 based on what we are trying to monitor to the respective square 1 square 2 pins I'll for now uh, just connect the square 1 pin and we can go back to the oscilloscope and see the square wave being generated 
you can always trigger uh, the wave to get a stable output for analysis purpose anyway so with that uh, out of the way we can now try out the logic analyzer the logic analyzer is an instru uh, instrument which is basically used to analyze digital output from external circuits in this case we are generating digital output from the ps lab itself for the sake of demonstration so let's say um, we dial down the frequency to 85 hertz for square one and for square two let's say we change the duty cycle to 90 percent and the phase to uh, maybe 180 then we go back and uh, we have the two pins connected click on logic analyzer the number of channels that we will be monitoring will be two because we just have two connected to them and we are going to um, uh, trigger for every edge as in going up or going down we have options for falling edge rising edge and so on so we click this and my bad i forgot to reconnect them to the logic analyzer pins it was still connected to channel one and channel two my bad I'll just do that. and there you go so here as you can see uh, this has a 90 percent duty cycle while the other one is a pure square wave which has a duty cycle of 50 percent and this can be used to uh, study the digital waves that are being generated now we can uh, take a look at the power source so this basically allows us to generate programmable voltages and current so here uh, pv1 will allow us to generate voltage from minus 5 to 5 volts pv2 will uh, do the same but the range is minus 3.3 to plus 3.3 volts pv3 is 0 to 3.3 volts and pcs is 0 to 3.3 uh, milliamps so for the sake of demonstration let's change the value of pv1 to minus 2.73 and we have it connected to channel one so we can go back to oscilloscope and um, yep i think we have something in that range then uh we can take a look at the multimeter So here, as you can see, the channel one was connected to the programmable voltage source and we set the value for the voltage to be 2.73. If you go back to multimeter and it is indeed 2.73. So this can also be used to measure external um, voltage sources, which can be batteries or uh, a circuit that is generating voltage and so on then we have uh, other options like measuring um, the frequency of a wave that is being generated so we'll again reconnect channel 1 to sign 1 pin and measure it So it should be connected to the logic analyzer one pin and as we remember it was 500 Hertz if you go back and change the value to let's say uh, 1912 Hertz and go back and try the multimeter again so it is indeed detecting the right values we also have an option to uh, study capacitance of an actual capacitor and resistance 
so for the sake of demonstration i'm just going to uh, find out the resistance of a normal jumper cable which should be very small so it's so small that it's uh, just going to give zero but we if we uh, had an actual resistance um, for now i don't have a resistance right now but anyway this will work with let's say carbon based resistors and uh, copper wires and so on coming to our next instrument we have the robotic arm this ui basically lets you program servo motors connected in a robotic arm to assume certain angles at particular moment in this timeline so this timeline runs from 0 to 1 minute and the markings here are basically for a particular second so the angle changes every second and the first row is for servo 1 the second row for servo 2 and so on so let's say we want to change the value of servo 1 to 76 degree at the fourth second and the seventh second and the tenth second and maybe to 177 in the fifth second the eighth second and the ninth second for the values that are empty the servo motor will not change their angle it will just stay on whatever it was last time so we can do something similar for servo 2 just drag and drag and drop or you can click on this to change the value so let's say 56 go here and say on 5 7 9 10 and maybe change the angle a bit and again do the same so uh, this can be done for the four rows and then you just connect the motors and play and the servo motors should behave according to the timeline that we have given so going back to um, the home screen so we have uh, an option to log data and config values for the power source let's say you have this configured to 2.25 you save this config and you change this value let's say and if you want to go back to that config click on this and we have this back again so uh, this can be used to <coughs> uh, let's say create configs and export this to the android app and uh, use that particular config which you had used for a particular experiment or you can do the uh, I mean do vice versa for example doing that experiment on the phone and importing that config from there so both options are totally possible you can delete these files from here if you want uh, we also have an option to log data from uh, oscilloscope and multimeter for example if you are reading some data you feel like recording it you click this record button and uh, it has started recording you stop it so if you go back you should be able to see this file and if you actually go to the folder where it is saved you'll be able to see the data that has been recorded in a csv file which can be used to basically play it back on the android device if you want or maybe on the same device so that is basically a brief description of what we have implemented from scratch in this uh, duration of GSOC and we'll keep on improving this app. Feel free to get in touch with me in case you have any questions and um, thank you for watching. Goodbye.